A couple of states I won't mention, but a couple of states really surprise people. But basically, the states decide on abortion. And people are absolutely thrilled with the way that's going on. So to recap, right now, Donald Trump and his allies are planning a detailed roadmap, they've given it out, to rip away a woman's right to choose in every single state in America should they take power. Anyone tempted to think, well, we survived Trump's first term. First, not everyone did. Because if Trump's first term was defined by chaos, his second could be defined by ruthless efficiency. If there weren't already alarm bells ringing to the tune of a Manhattan street at 2 a.m., this segment by John Oliver has to pierce through the noise, and it is worth every bit of your attention. Let's talk about Trump's second term. Who's making those plans for him, what they entail, and how much damage they could do. And the main insight we have into all of this comes from something called Project 2025, which I know sounds like a sexy CW sci-fi drama. <laughs> With the likes of the New York Post and Fox News running endless propaganda from the Trump campaign, smoke and mirrors such as Biden's quote, wandering aimlessly while he's actually talking to a demonstrator a little off camera. Right-wing media seized on a moment at the G7 summit yesterday involving President Biden. The Twitter account, RNC Research, which is managed by Donald Trump's campaign, shared a clip which appeared to show President Biden wandering off from other world leaders before the Italian prime minister comes over to alert him about a group photo. That moment is also on the front cover of today's New York Post with the headline, Meander in Chief. Well, there's a reason for all this. They don't want your newsfeed filled with things like record-breaking Nasdaq, inflation reduction reaching its target. He did do well in the polls, better in the Fox poll, better than he's done before. And I think that was mostly independence, and I think mostly because they feel the economy is a little better. But And wages has been outperforming inflation for, I think, 12 straight months, if not longer. So we're seeing some really good things. We still have an incredibly strong job market. Wages are doing well. So I think there's a lot of good things. That or John Oliver's profound breakdown of what a second Trump term would look like if he's given the chance. What do we do here? Well, the simple thing is, don't vote for Donald Trump. I don't know if you were planning on doing that, but, but I think it should be clear by now that the official position of this show is that you should not vote for Donald Trump. The host of Last Week Tonight, and side note, really nice Englishman who happened to empathize with a heartbroken Scot in the wake of our demolishing at the hands of Germany, massively broke down Trump's Project 2025 and what it would mean for the country going forward. Not only highlighting its architects, many of them as unhinged as you would come to expect. Duration day, the four years ahead. Seems like an eternity. It's not because the left has engineered our government and institutions to reject conservative ideology. The 2025 Presidential Transition Project brings together conservative organizations to ensure the policy and personnel are in place on January 20th, 2025. Using four pillars, we are laying the foundation for the next president to end Washington's bureaucracy and restore American prosperity. More than a hundred conservative organizations have come together to work on this, and they're all there. You've got the Heritage Foundation, Liberty University, the NRA, Turning Point USA, Rodeo Clowns for Trump, the Center for Ruining Thanksgiving, the Marriages Between a Man and His Property Institute. But how a second term could pose even more disastrous repercussions to what we are already seeing as, as a result of a conservative stack Supreme Court, simply because of readiness. One of the reasons Trump got off to a slow start last time is that because nobody expected him to win, there wasn't a plan in place for what to do once he did. And it asked how many of the individuals there would remain into the next administration, to which someone presumably had to tell him, not many, you f***ing idiots. Trump's win in 2016 was so unexpected that a plan like this wasn't in place. And as Trump has already promised, the guardrails that surrounded him during his first term will be no more. And the yes men of Stephen Miller and co will be there to stroke his ego and hand him a pen. Former president give his endorsement to this <laughs> 
want you to continue to be the speaker after the November election? He said very complimentary things about all of us. Uh, it, we had uh, sustained applause. He, he said, I'm doing a very good job. I mean, we're, we're grateful for that. Look, we have to have continuity and leadership. We have to have a plan, and it has to be very carefully uh, executed. Um, with anyway, during Trump's first term, he got frustrated by the fact so many of the career government employees seem to be undermining him by telling him things that he wanted to do were illegal or that things he said were wrong or, you know, testifying publicly about the laws they'd seen him break. In 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. Well, I did do that. And this we time, had tremendous. Look, we had the best economy we've ever had. This the world time has ever seen. Your vice president, Mike Pence, is running against you. Yeah. Your ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned National Security Advisor John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr uh, says you shouldn't be president again. Uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, bar a, a gutless pig. Uh, your second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House chief of staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective. Schedule F would fix all of that. It would reclassify around 50,000 career civil servants as political appointees, meaning they wouldn't have civil service protections from getting fired, and whoever replaces them could be hired on loyalty, not on merit. Oliver touched on this in the concluding part of his segment, how the only qualification needed to be part of Trump's potential cabinet is an allegiance to the cult leader and a high tolerance for ketchup. Here is Russell Vought explaining the plan to Don Jr.'s fiance. Most notably Schedule F, which uh, allows us to reclassify. If you work on policy, <clears throat> you have the opportunity to be reclassified and turn into an at-will employment. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're gonna get fired tomorrow, but that does mean that you are now working for the President of the United States. You're not working for your own institution or your own institutional benefits. You don't work for the institution, you work for the President. Your job isn't to correct him, it's to say, absolutely right, Mr. President, you- And this is why his warnings of being a dictator on day one, or seeking retribution, are not just inflammatory words to rile up his base. They are, in fact, warnings. Schedule F. A president could exert a lot of power and enact a lot more policy simply by telling his loyalists what to do. Trump wouldn't need Congress to vote on a nationwide ban on abortion drugs when he could simply have his FDA declare them unsafe instead. Because he doesn't want a buffer this time. There's no diet fascist. It's full fat. And we need to be aware of this. Project 2025 is a movement whose members joke about wanting a white homeland. This is women have to have more babies to uphold Western society. It is not subtle. It's hard to miss. And once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.